My name is Tyler Stallman, and I want to show you some of the most powerful tools in Lightroom. We're going to be using Lightroom Classic CC, and these are things that can apply to anybody, but especially people that are just getting into editing raw photos for the first time. It's incredibly powerful, but there's some common ways I see a lot of people get tripped up, and there's some simple things you can do to make your photos look great. And if you want to make a great website, look no further than Squarespace. Whether you want to buy a domain, build an online store, or create a beautiful photography portfolio, build it with Squarespace. Some of this might sound basic to some people, but stick with me because I, I have a theory that most people's biggest issues aren't not understanding what sliders do, but not seeing what you need to do with your photo to really bring it to where it should be. So I'm gonna be touching on a few things that are really basic, but ways to use them to bring the most out of your photography. So I'm gonna start right at the top with the temperature sliders. I'm using some photography that we recently took when he went to Florence, um, just kind of some random photos from it. And looking at color temperature, so this image is taken in the morning, and this is actually a pretty accurate representation of what the scene looked like at that moment, but it's not that beautiful. Uh, so the most important thing I think when people are setting color temperature is to be looking at skin tones and how they sit within the rest of the image. So the first thing I see is that they were much too cool at the beginning. Um, and if I bring them up to what feels like a more natural level to me, uh, I always like to go a bit too far and bring it back down. But if you get the white balance wrong, it's really difficult to get the rest of the colors looking good in your image. It doesn't matter what else you do. If everything's way too cool or way too warm, it just feels incorrect. So what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, set this to something that's approximately right. And I won't be afraid to go back and tweak it as I move through my image. But that's just got to be accurate no matter what. A good way to think about it is that the first stage is just correcting the colors of your photo, getting them accurate, and then eventually you're moving to adding a look or kind of a filter. So we're mostly focused on getting it looking good right now. Now let's move on to the next one, which is exposure. You have used the exposure slider. I know you touched it. It's probably the first thing that you tried using, but understanding what it's doing is incredibly helpful and just like what are different exposures in Lightroom, what does a good exposure mean? So this image we're looking at right now is pretty uniformly lit. Like everything has the same amount of light on it. Um, I would bring it up a little bit to, to bring the, the skin up, but it makes us lose some detail in the sky. So I would actually bring the highlights down quite a bit. You've been able to do a lot more highlight adjustments in recent updates to Adobe. They have a really great raw engine there. And uh, another way that you can add a bit more dynamic range into your image is also bring up the shadows at the same time. Um, and then add a little bit of contrast in to keep the image looking the way that it did before. That's maybe a little more than I'd like. Um, so I am moving a bunch of different sliders, but it's important to understand this actually is all one tool. If you look up at the histogram, you can click in any of these areas and move those same sliders around. Like you're really only affecting the histogram in a specific way. Like these are like predefined points on a tone curve that Adobe lets you move around. So let's get this back to somewhere that I actually want to leave it, maybe around there, and to really emphasize what good exposure can look like. Let's look at a kind of confusing image. So this image is actually very brightly lit right on the subject, but all the background is incredibly dark. So what is correct exposure? If I just bring it up till we see the background, the actual subject starts to get blown out and a lot of the drama that was nice about this photo kind of disappears. So I, I would try to keep this somewhere relatively neutral where we can see a bit more detail um, and we'll use these highlights and shadow sliders to kind of save it a bit, but it still retains that initial oomph of having this kind of crazy dramatic lighting. And here's another one that if we feel like it, I mean, you could push the dynamic range pretty hard in this image. This is where you can really see how powerful your camera is. And just this before and after, you can see there's a lot of information hiding in most photos as long as you're shooting raw. And the sliders can do a lot to save it. Final word on exposure is just choose your subject. Choose the thing in the photo that you want to be exposed correctly. Like, there's not really a correct exposure for any image. There's just things that look better and worse. So choose a part of the image that should be the primary subject and get it exposed well. And if there's any details you're losing, try to recover them. I'm going to skip over clarity and dehaze. I feel like those are dangerous. Like you should only touch those if you know what you're doing. Uh, vibrance and saturation get used 
quite a bit. Um, this image actually could use some of it because it's a relatively low contrast, but that's not one of the ones I want to focus on. I'm going to skip over tone curve because we did all that with these sliders up here for exposure and shadows and highlights. And let's move right into HSL. HSL is the next superpower tool that really can get you a lot more done than you may think. It, it can look intimidating at first because there's so much in there, but all it's doing is letting you access each color in the image directly. So I'm gonna to go to an image that has some really distinct different colors in it so we can see what happens as we move it. You can have everything visible at once. I prefer to go through one at a time. Another trick at the same time, if you right click here, I prefer to work in solo mode. If you don't do solo mode, whoops, they uh, can, you can open multiple panels, but on a smaller screen, like I'm on a laptop, uh, that gets confusing. So I like solo mode. Let's go back to it. And I'm gonna start with hue. Hue is the main way that you can add like a film look to your image. Uh, and it basically takes each color value and moves it towards other color values. You don't need to fully understand this. So I'm just gonna give you a few shortcuts to start playing with, and then you can kind of explore it more on your own. One thing is that I really prefer to see my blues be more cyan um, almost all the time. It just, it, it makes it feel more film-like. This is what things look like in the film days and it's moved away from that a bit with digital. So it's kind of the first thing I'll always do. I'll just say minus 20 so it's not too extreme here. And then similarly, my greens, I like to make them a little bit more cool, a little more blue, and it just pulls them away from skin tones and from warmer yellow tones. So there's just kind of more color contrast in the image. And then with oranges and reds, I like to move them uh, in the direction that they are closer to each other. So that means with reds, I'm making them a little more yellow and not a lot. I mean, I'm gonna say 10 there, I'm gonna say minus five here. There's, there's not a lot of red in this image, but in skin tones, it helps smooth out differences. And that's, that's actually more than I do in green. That's too much, let's say 20. Now let's jump over to saturation. Um, I mean, a lot of the time I'll, like, I'll play with the blue and this one, the image actually already was kind of desaturated. Sometimes skies are extremely blue and I'd bring it down. This, I'm just actually gonna leave at zero. Sometimes I'll emphasize reds a little bit and maybe bring down oranges so that in people's features, like lips will stand out a little bit and it'll take away some of the inconsistencies in their skin. And also, if you want to bring out foliage, a lot of the time you'll notice that the yellow slider actually really touches on greens more than you might think. Um, so don't only try to move the green slider. Like in this one, we actually have relatively little impacts moving greens. Yellow really cranks up that saturation. Finally, luminance is, you know, brightness, how, how bright or dark something is. And, uh, you know, we could add a lot of drama to the sky by, by bringing that down if we wanted to. You just have to be careful because as you push it far, you'll start to see that images break apart. So uh, it would definitely not move any of these sliders more, like much more than 50. They start to break after 50. But definitely play with HSL. Like this is a super powerful tool. This is how all the presets that you're using are making things look like film or they might be doing another thing. This is a bonus, I'm not gonna go into any details, but if you go down to calibration, these sliders have similar effects to HSL, but they're, uh, it's a little more of a mystery of how they're really working, but you can get some nice results if you move your blues to the left, your greens to the right, and your reds to the right, and maybe bring up saturation of your reds. You can play with these exact numbers, I'm not giving you a formula, but it starts making it feel like a lot of the film emulation that you might be seeing out in the wild. But I'm gonna reset all of that for now because uh, it's a little too advanced. Let's move on to the final most important tool that will just kind of fix your photos. Like if your photos are half decent, but not great, it might be because you are not straightening lines or fixing the composition in post. And to do that, I'm gonna look at the transform tool. Let's move over to an image with a lot of straight lines, open up transform. And I can tell because the way this image looks, there's a ton of vertical lines going on they are slightly off, like over to the right. This is really quite crooked. Um, over here, they're kind of converging. Like it's some mixture of my camera not quite being straight, but also just perspective shift. Like maybe I was a little lower than I could have been. So if I hit auto, it does an amazing job of straightening these lines. This doesn't work on every image. Sometimes it kind of breaks. But whenever you see a whole bunch of straight lines, auto often does a pretty great job. If you want it to be a little bit more refined, I see this still is a little off. You can use guided where you draw lines across the image. Just make sure they were actually straight lines to begin with. And you get a even more accurate job. But yeah, you gotta make sure these points are in the right place or you can break it even worse. 
But if you don't do that, it just will look like you didn't put nearly as much thought into your image. So I'm constantly using transform to correct the perspective of my images. Now I'm gonna quickly go through and edit all these photos, but before I do, I just wanna remind you that this video is brought to you by Squarespace. For over a decade now, I've used it to host my portfolio, a podcast, so many different things. It's been an incredible platform to build my business. Whether you're a creative professional, you wanna let people know about your services, or you have something to sell online, Squarespace can get you there. They have incredible, responsive templates designed by fantastic designers. I used to be a web designer, so I can recognize good work when I see it, and they do a great job. I'm able to customize everything I need. So go to squarespace.com slash Stallman to get 10% off your next website. Now, finally, I'm just gonna do a bit of a speed run and show you how I actually edit these photos. Uh, let's insert some music. So just using those basic tools, I brought a lot of life back to these photos. This is only starting to touch on things like film emulation or giving it a real look, but at least they look correct and professional. And you can punch them up a little bit more from here. But if you have any more questions about it, you can come find me on Twitter. I'm at Stallman and I'll try to answer it on my podcast. All right, and my laptop is done because it can't handle the screen recording.